bewitched? Denim clad bewitched burst out of Ireland and into the charts. Their breakthrough album went platinum on both sides of the Atlantic. And the Celt Quartet outspiced the Spice Girls, debuting with four UK number ones. My biggest anxiety about doing this, there's only one, and it's Sinead, I think. It's just how I'm going to feel about being in her person again. It's hard to hear that, like. It's hard to hear that. Hi, everybody. I'm Sinead. Hi, I'm Lindsay. Hi, I'm Edel. Hi, I'm Kiwi. And we're twin sisters. And we, we are Bewitched. Back on Planet Bewitched, the all-new, all-singing, all-jigging pop quartet cast a spell over industry bigwigs and were instantly snapped up by Epic Records, the powerhouse behind ABBA and Michael Jackson. The marketing machine cranked into action, creating brand Bewitched. And I remember we got the video for Sailor V and my face dropped and Edel's face dropped. And I'm going, oh my God, what is that, the state of us? We were young, we were energetic, we were fun, and that's what the video was about. Uh oh, this is bubble, 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 bubble gum with extra bubbles on the top. <laughs> and I, that was a shock. And that wasn't the only eyebrow raising decision. Bewitched were given a distinctive style, not seen since the dubious heyday of dad friendly 70s rockers status quo. The double denim. Yeah, we were technically the second double denim band, but uh, I, I don't think there's any more similarities between Bewitched and Status Quo than that. We did everything you can imagine with denim. We embroidered it, we put tassels on it. Our manager used to say, every time you step outside the door, you have to be in denim because you have to be in uniform. We were just totally denimed out. But kids went crazy for the quadruple denim quartet and sales for their debut single went through the roof. Literally, when Sailor V was released and went straight in the charts at number one, our life changed overnight. Mind-blowing. We never thought it would happen. It went from being able to walk down the street to not being able to walk down the street without being mobbed. It was huge. And we came out of nowhere as far as people were concerned. They were like, what? There's this girl band from Ireland in the number one. Who are they? Where are they? And what do they come from? That was the moment I thought, oh, OK, we are actually making it. It's not we're going to make it. We're making it like that, in place, it was meant to be. It was crazy. Coming up, our two girl groups topping the charts, but about to hit rock bottom. I'm not happy. I had so much hatred for her, for what she did. I was sobbing, I just lost it. She was struggling so much that she had to call me into her room and tell me how much she was struggling. And that really upset me. Nineteen ninety-eight, denim-clad jig practitioners Bewitched had achieved unprecedented overnight success. The whole thing has definitely surpassed, you know, my expectations of what it would be. It's just been absolutely phenomenal. Debut single Sailor V catapulted them into the top ten around the globe, including the US Billboard charts, and this was quickly followed up by another UK number one. As the girls river danced their way on a worldwide promotional tour, friendships blossomed. My Stephanie Dell had a very, very intense relationship. Sinead and I shared a room, it wasn't Kiwi and Lindsay shared a room. And we became so close, like, she was everything to me. It was like a marriage. Without the sex, maybe that's what was wrong, <laughs> I don't know. But relationships within the clique were tested as the competitive foursome battled for the spotlight and lead vocals. When we first started as a group, the lead was shared equally. And then we met our producer, and a decision was made that there would be a lead singer, and that was going to be Adele. She was kind of definitely the spokesperson, the leader, the lead singer. She was definitely um, the one. And Kiwi and Sinead and I were to um, sing the backing vocals. That was hard. Because they kind of felt, well, what's the point of being here? if we're not contributing to it. I know that upset the others. 
I mean, it didn't, it didn't upset me, obviously, because I was enjoying it. And from as far back as I can remember, all I wanted to be was a singer. And now I was becoming one, so that's all that mattered to me. I wouldn't have stepped back from my position because I enjoyed being in it. But while Adele was relishing her role in pole position, her songbird sibling was fighting hard not to fade into the background. It must be really difficult watching your sister, your twin, knowing that the two of you sing very, very similar and seeing her being, being out there, you know. Um, and I, yeah, Kiwi found it really hard to deal with that. I was definitely sad about it. I very much felt like I was in my twin's shadow, which is why I was the dancer, why I was the joker, because I just wanted to be seen. I wanted to make sure that the people actually knew there was, there was two of us with the same face. As one girl band had lost its grip on untold fame and fortune, another was on the brink of global glory. In the six months since they exploded onto the music scene, the which debut album had gone platinum on both sides of the Atlantic, spawning hit after hit. You couldn't open a magazine, you couldn't turn on the telly and not see Bewitched, whether you liked us or you didn't, we were just in your face. Whirlwind after whirlwind, we were kind of pinching ourselves, but we were just kind of going along with everything. And they hit the big time, touring with NSYNC, Justin Timberlake's boy band, across the length and breadth of North America. And along the way, the awesome foursome made music history. We were the first girl group to have their four first singles go straight in at number one. So we broke, we broke records. As amazing as that is, it's incredible pressure as well because we now know all we've done since we started was have this platform of number one. So we actually, in the back of your mind is, if we dip at all, that's it, we're on our way out. And I think, if we didn't get number one, we would have been really upset and worried about it, but because we were number one, we were like, OK, we can relax now, you know, the pressure's off for a while. We got a number one. To fans, Bewitched seemed unstoppable, but one of the girls was buckling under the pressure. I didn't know how to reach out. I didn't know how to tell someone that things weren't OK. We had a week's holiday, I think it was, and I went to Portugal with my family and with my best friends. That's where I really started to notice something was really wrong. It was like, oh, you're getting brown, you look lovely today. And in my head, my reply was, so fucking what? I just went, I can't do it anymore. Lost the front, phoned Didel from my hotel room, couldn't even talk to her. So I came to her room and she was just in such a state. I was like, I just, I was sobbing. I just lost it. What upset me at this point is that I hadn't seen it before she had to tell me. She was struggling so much that she had to call me into her room and tell me how much she was struggling. And that really upset me. <clears throat> that really upset me because we're so close and we're twins. And I haven't got time to notice that my sister is really struggling. And that's what I felt like. Adele said to me, you need help. <laughs> And it was like a relief that she said it to me. I rang everybody and I said, right, Kiwi is going. She's going away for two, three weeks. End of story. She's gone. And I don't care what any of you say. What matters is that Kiwi is shattered right now. <sighs> and nobody seems to care about that. And it just made me realise that we weren't people to these people. We were... <clears throat> we were a product, you know? Um, and their product was being tampered with as far as they were concerned. By the end of 1999, Bewitched had spent half a year on an American arena tour. Exhausted and struggling to maintain her perma-happy grin, Kiwi snapped. Breakdown or not, she was soon called back to work. We left a bit of a gap in the UK, and by the time it came to releasing and promoting the second album, we'd lost a little bit of momentum. Nonetheless, they were confident of maintaining their unblemished number one record with the release of an American-inspired country track. We have Jessie Hold On. It's not a number one. It 
hit number four. So I think the, you know, the press reacted negatively to that towards us. It was like, oh, we were on their way down. They had a number four and not number one. Oh God, disaster struck. With single sails on a downward turn, a swift rescue plan was urgently needed. It was time for Bewitched to ditch the infamous double denim and sex it up. Anyway, you're back and you've gone all sexy, girls. Yeah. Are you going all grown up on us or what? No, I think when we came back with the second album, we had kind of come back with a grown up image, but it was a nice mm -hmm. grown up image. So now we just put a bit of a rougher edge to it and kind of make it a little sexy. Yeah. Well, right. should we have a little look at the new yeah. sexy Bewitched with the new <laughs> single, Jump? Should we have a look? Yeah. Jump down. The whole change of image was the wrong choice. Oh, let's do a sexy thing. I was like, I don't know how to do that. I don't want to do that. It was never who we were. I just think the fans got confused. It's like, well, you're nice and bubblegum and pop and... Well, what's this? <laughs> like, it, it just didn't work. Jump Down scored the band's lowest chart position to date, 16, and jumped straight out of the charts. The luck of the Irish had run out. You could see the struggle that we were going through, realising shit, this is our industry, this is our career, and it's going, it's going downhill. After four phenomenally successful years, Bewitched had lost their magic touch. But undeterred, the band were plotting to fight back with a new album. We had the first song chosen and the video treatment was done. We were just, we were supposed to be flying out to Africa. But then there's something wasn't sitting with me and I don't know what it was. And out of the blue, the band would drop to bombshell. I remember the phone call from our manager at the time. Okay, so I've got some bad news. When I put the phone down, I went, it's over. And she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, it's done. And she was like, what's done? They're not gonna go ahead with their third album. And I was like, what do you mean, not going to go ahead with it? Bewitched, it's over. Sony are dropping us. What? It was like the rug being pulled under your feet at 90 miles an hour. And for it to be just so sudden like that, you know, not even a maybe or they're thinking about it, really was complete and utter disbelief. Myself and Adele just wandered around in a daze for a couple of weeks, the two of us drank constantly for those couple of weeks and ran out and got tattoos that aren't even that brilliant looking. Like, screw you, record company, I'm going to get a tattoo. It's like, hmm, how does that screw them? <laughs> but once they'd sobered up, Adele was adamant that their pop star days were not over yet and she rallied the troops. The discussion of what was next was um, that we would just go to another label. And I just wasn't feeling it. You know, it doesn't feel like we're going to have the success we did in the beginning. And to me, it was kind of like, well, what's the point? Adele came down to see me. We sat out the back in the garden and I kind of said, you know what? It's time for me to leave. I felt like my wife was leaving me. That's what I actually felt like. I need to, you know, find out who I am without you beside me constantly, you know. I just remember being heartbreaking. My intention was never to kind of hurt somebody and I did. Um, I mean, I just did what I did at the time. The former superstars have carved new lives away from the spotlight. After she quit the band, Sinead returned to her Irish roots and started a family. She now runs her own talent academy, teaching the next generation of Biebers and Tweedies how to bust a move. Right arms. No, no, bend down. Left. Head. I set up Star Academy four years ago. It's a mixture of singing, dancing and drama. And I mainly try to focus on pop. Anticipating being on the other side now in the next few months with the girls, I'm kind of dreading it a bit in one sense because I know like the choreography is probably just going to be 
so much different and I'll have to get really, really fit and it's just a different lead. Good. Adele moved back to her hometown near Dublin with her husband Michael and three kids. The former lead singer has hung up her mic, putting motherhood first. I'm delighted that the kids get to see what, what I do. I know it's not really what I've done since they've been here, but it's what I love. I think it's really important for the kids to see their parents doing what they really love. The music makes me tick, doesn't it? In the years after the band, relationships between Adele and Sinead turned sour. I think I'm probably most nervous about getting back with Sinead. I think it's going to bring up an awful lot of emotions for me because I do love her and I spend so much time with her. Like we were like that. So when you go from being like that to like this, I didn't know how to be like this with her. I'm going to get emotional now. <laughs> when Bewitched fell apart, it hit Kiwi hard. Over the years, she's battled with depression. She now works as a counsellor, and music has been her therapy. This is, uh, this is the glamour of backstage you don't see. It smells like it looks. No longer decked in double denim, Kiwi's finally out of her twin shadow, fronting her own band, The Collection, switching screaming fans for wedding guests. I genuinely love getting to sing lead for like two hours every night. It makes me happy, it's fun, stress releasing, and I just to be in my own little world and really enjoying myself. But it's not to say I won't enjoy when I'm with the girls, it's going to be very different. It's just a step back to 13 years ago, it's a long time ago. But I will have to find my blend of backing vocal again. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for having us with you tonight. Ah, sisters. Post Bewitched, Lindsay swapped music for acting. Sorry, we're a bit late. Appearing on the silver screen. I just wanna make you sweat. I wanna make you sweat. She married, then separated from 911's poster boy Lee Brennan. And she'll have to come face to face with her estranged husband at rehearsals. But that's not her only concern. Idel was the lead singer. She also was the one with the strongest opinions and she was our spokesperson, so it felt like to me that it was her band. There's a fear and a danger that it might feel easy to slip back into old patterns. And I think if it does, then this won't work. In 1998, four Irish beauties with the collective denim fetish became one of history's biggest girl bands. They smashed UK chart records, bagged four consecutive number ones and jigged their way to over three million album sales in the process. When the band split four years later, Sinead and Adele returned to Ireland, while Kiwi and Lindsay remained close in London. But relationships were fractured. Adele and Sinead's friendship fell apart. I felt like my wife was leaving me. That's what I actually felt like. My intention was never to kind of hurt somebody, and I did. Lindsay battled to find her new identity. The ending of the band was a blur. Whilst Kiwi struggled to come to terms with life outside her twin shadow. Why I was the dancer, why I was the joker, because I just wanted to be seen. I wanted to make sure that people actually knew there was, there was two of us with the same face. But before their big reunion can move forward, Adele and Sinead have flown to London. All four girls are about to meet up at Lindsay's house for the first time in six years to face their issues. I feel sick. <laughs> I'm really nervous and I don't know why. We're just like waiting for the buzzer to go because there should be here any second. I do feel, I feel very nervous now. I don't know what to expect. Is today going to be fun? Is it going to be emotional? Will there be tears? Will there be anger? I'm not sure. I don't know if I'm changing my mind. Like I was in the car on the way here going, oh, I don't know, do I want to do this? Will I get out? 
No, I won't get out. No, I will I get out. No, I won't get out. It's been so long since we've been together as a four. Um, I don't know how the chemistry is going to be between us. Hey, now. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, my God, you look fabulous. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a mirror? Can we see us all in your hallway mirror? We look like Cory. Cor we look like Cora's I'm Jim. The big reunion gig is edging closer, and with so much water under the bridge. There's lots to discuss. Yeah, Are you so excited? I'm just constantly feeling nervous. Mm. It's yeah, it's, it's the fear of the do. unknown, isn't it? Because yeah. we don't know how it's going to work. We don't. I do. <laughs> I'm out front now, ladies and gents. Sorry to tell you. <laughs> When Bewitched imploded in 2002, even the powerful bond between twins Kiwi and Adele was stretched. Kiwi stayed in London while Adele returned to Ireland. Life has turned out well for Adele. She part owns a children's animation business and is happily married with kids. When I met my husband, my cousin set us up on the blind date. And the second I arrived, the second I saw him, I couldn't believe it. I was just like, oh my God, is that my blind date? I just thought he was gorgeous. You do, buddy. Go way ahead of a Look, at your pizza's amazing. Edel might be happy with pizza and movie night now, but life's had its ups and downs over the last 10 years. When the band ended, we all actually had an identity crisis. Everybody did. Kiwi fell into a very, very deep depression. She couldn't find who she was. And that's really difficult. It's not nice not knowing who you are. It's actually quite lonely. I just became Kiwi from Bewitched, so when that was snatched off me, I was like, well, who am I? I didn't, I was like, I actually don't know who Kiwi is. I didn't discuss my state of mind with anybody. I didn't at that point, and I didn't for the next five years. If you did go out for a coffee or go to Sainsbury's and people were looking at you, at times inside my head, I, I was going, what the fuck are you looking at? I was in London one weekend and we were in a car on the way home from a club and Kiwi just started screaming in the back of the cab. The cabman seen what a state I was in and he pulled over on the road and we all got out of the car and Kiwi was just screaming in the middle of a London street, just... Just scream. I was like, I can't even remember what she was screaming. I just remember it being heartbreaking. And I just remember saying to her, OK, you know what, you need help. This is not enough for me to help you. I couldn't say it out loud. I was, I was waiting and hoping that somebody would say it to me because the words were just too big to get out of my mouth. I couldn't reach out and just couldn't say to someone, I need help. I guess I was a ticking bomb, and the bomb exploded. While Kiwi was having a meltdown, Idel was planning for the biggest day of her life. It was a day neither Lynch would ever forget. She was a maid of honour at my wedding, and rightly so. She was everything to me. And it was a, it was a really difficult day for her. When I think of uh, Adele's big day, I was pretty... I wasn't, ho I wasn't fully there. I was putting on a face trying to... trying to be there for her on the biggest day of her life. And I was going... <laughs> the feelings were so conflictive because I knew how much she was struggling. And I'm trying to be so happy for myself, which I actually was naturally, because I'd met the love of my life. But yet so unhappy because the first love of my life is falling to pieces. And when I, when I think about it now, I hate that I wasn't there for her like I'd like to be. I would like to be completely engrossed in her day and enjoying every minute, but I wasn't. 
and I know desperately she wanted to give a shit, but she couldn't. I have a picture and it's a lovely picture. You can see the back of me and we're hugging each other, but it's it's quite a, it's a really nice picture, but you can see the struggle in the picture that I'm going through. It's almost like, um, it's almost like I'm gripping onto her. Myself and Edel know what's going on in that picture. It's just like, you can see the, yeah, you can just see me, the struggle. It was hard. It was sad. Since the wedding, Kiwi slowly got her life back on track. When I had my breakdown, I went into counselling and I started to understand some of where I went wrong, some of where I got lost. And because I did, I ended up finding my strength again and becoming um, a whole person. I'm studying counselling, which I absolutely love, really, really passionate about it. I'm in my last year. For me, counselling was a gift and I just want to be able to pass that gift on. As well as studying counselling, Kiwi also volunteers for a charity in her oh, spare time. Hi, Archie. Hello, Archie. My name is Kiwi from Make-A-Wish Foundation. And I'm Caroline. We're here to find out what your wish is going to be. We can't actually give those children extra days onto their life, but we can give them life into their days, which is really nice and it is really special to be part of. And she's rekindled her passion for pop by singing lead in a covers band. How's this any different then from doing it from in the past with you when you were bewitched? I get to sing out loud, out the front. <laughs> I'm a lead. Guys, thank you very much for having us with you tonight. Enjoy the rest of the night. Now standing taller than ever, Kibi even finds time to be a stilt walker with her other sister, Naomi. My little sister is a fire performer and a stilt walker and she went, get up on stilts if you want. I said, fine. So I did. And I still do it now because it's a laugh and I get to work with my sister and hang out with her and get paid. The girls from Bewitched are back together for the first time in six years. But with the Hammersmith Apollo concert looming, putting differences aside is proving harder than they thought. It's making me feel really weird. Yeah. What's weird is we don't feel like a unit. That's what it is. It's like we're all sitting here very separate, very mm -hmm. individual. Mm -hmm. And that's, Feels I don't right. know how to be mm -hmm. this singular in this, this situation. situation. Yeah. When Bewitched shut up shop in 2002, Sinead and Idel's friendship also came to an end and emotions are still raw. My biggest anxiety about doing this, there's only one, and it's Sinead, I think. It's just how I'm gonna feel about being in her person again. She was everything to me. It was like, you know, a marriage or a, really a relationship and saying, you know what, I love you to pieces, but I just need time by myself, on my own. I need to figure out who, you know, I am without you. Since leaving the band behind, Sinead has rediscovered herself. But despite being happily married with kids in Ireland, her fallout with Idel still weighs heavy. After a while, they wanted to actually continue and try and get another record deal. Yeah, I remember that. And then no one else was going I remember to Idel was, came yeah. down and we sat out in the garden and um, I kind of think she knew then that I think I wanted to leave. I think that was the hardest part. Yeah, yeah. I know, that was a very emotional time for you. I know that. It's like, I always call it a fallout, which sounds so royal, mm. but it wasn't that royal, mm. it was like a slip away or something, you know? Mm. Yeah, I don't know, it just, it just feels weird. How do you feel hearing her say that? I feel like I've said everything mm. and, you know, there isn't another explanation. Like, I don't feel nervous, I don't feel uncomfortable, I don't feel anxious, do you know what I mean? In <clears throat> I, think that's, I, I think that's what feels weird for me, because I can tell, I can feel that from you, and I can tell that you are, 
you're already comfortable with whatever we are or we're not, and I'm not there yet. And the more I see of you and the more that your personality reminds me of what I loved, the more I'm afraid I'm gonna want from her, do you know what I mean? But she doesn't want to give it to me, so that's what I'm most afraid about. I'm like, why am I throwing myself in here to get so emotional about it? Because it was such a hard time to lose you. It was so hard. Like, it really did break my heart for years. <sighs> it's like I would be afraid that it would get too intense again, because... What's so scary about that, though? Because we I just, I think, years, I, like... I think I just lost who I was. I didn't know who I was. How, I don't know. I just don't think, I don't think any, it could get back to that intensity anyway. Because it I was don't think just that's even what me. I'm asking for yet. Yeah. Well, Do I just don't. I, mean? I don't have any preconceptions of what it may or may not be. Yeah. But it's emo it's very emotional. Mm. It's weird. After years apart and with scores unsettled, simply turning the smiles back on may be an impossible process. Another flip side to how I felt a lot of the time was lonely because I was, you know, the lead singer and very much, you know, in touch with the business side probably more than anyone else. You guys understand each other, mm. but no one understood me, so it made me feel quite lonely at times. It's funny because I can hear you saying, you three. And for me, that's not right. That's not how you felt? No, because I was a twin in the bands and living in my twin's shadow. Yeah. I was jealous of what you were doing, yeah. but I didn't realise yeah. what you were doing was actually quite high pressure being a lead Absolutely. singer. Absolutely. I've, I've thought that since as well. We are different people now. We all had our little roles in the band back then, and I, f I don't feel like that person anymore, so I know for, my, for myself I'm not going to be... I'm not going to be slipping back into a role that I, that I did ten years ago. Over the last ten years, it's been all changed for the band's quiet girl, Lindsay. When Bewitched hung up their denim jackets, her life was suddenly thrown into chaos. In the space of a year, my mum died and the band ended. And so my life just did 360. And last year, Lindsay's marriage to 911's Lee hit the rocks. We're not together anymore. We're still friends. There's only so much grieving and healing you can do, and then you have to go on with life. You know, then you have to pick yourself up and go, OK, what's next? I threw myself back into work, actually. I decided to try something very different and I went and trained uh, as an actor. I went to drama school for two years. I am officially an unemployed actress. <laughs> and she'll be exposing her talents in an upcoming movie. Sister Josephine. Lindsay's made a fresh start, but her thespian friends are mesmerised by tales of her pop past. <laughs> These are boxes which I haven't looked through for years. Um, I don't know what's in them, but it says storage, Lindsay's denim. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we had to do dance routines in them. Oh, I need this. Oh, that's got my name on. Putting the denim down. <laughs> <laughs> now back with the band, the new Lindsay finds the confidence to confront an old issue. Were you guys unhappy all the time? Like from day one? I felt very alone in the band yeah. mm. a lot of the time. And I felt I felt like because I was probably the quieter one, I was really a bit more placid, quiet. placid. So quiet. And I I slipped into a role that was I didn't recognise. Yeah. Like I was such a confident and outgoing person before I got into the band. And in the band I felt overwhelmed mm -hmm. by mm. you guys. I felt overwhelmed. By, us? What? by All the three of, of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I felt like if I had a um an opinion or a feeling about something that I felt like it was 
it was going to be seen as being rude or wrong. Or Who made yeah. you feel like that? Um, so that's you a big, did sometimes. That's a big thing to say that somebody makes you feel like something and not that you, you reacted to, reacted to that in doing that. that you know what I mean? You're saying that I made you feel like that. I'm a strong person, mm. but I'm not as opinionated and I'm not as quick off the mark to get in there with my opinion. I don't feel the need to do that. I don't feel like, I, you know, unless... So, sorry, am I cutting you off? No, go on. And when you say that I made you feel like that, but yet you're saying I was in a band with three strong characters, mm. but it was only me that you're referring to. I suppose in general, you know, you were the strongest, you know, even though Lindsay's saying, oh, other strong people, yeah. but you were the strongest, you were the most opinionated, and that's probably, do you know what I mean? That, that's, I think, where that's coming from. It almost felt like I, there wasn't a point, because you would win the conversation anyway, you would, put, you, your opinion would win the conversation anyway, so I felt like, well... Why would it win no it? Point. Because that's, because, because of your character, because of how strong... Because I would win it or because you would give up in the end? Well, exact. well, yeah, either way. How's everyone feeling now? I'm feeling a little bit different than when I walked through the door. I was nervous coming in and emotional about yeah. Sinead and I. And I, th I feel like over this chat that now I think you and I need to chat. While Sinead is out of the room, Lindsay and Adele attempt to thrash things out. I am still feeling like that you think a lot of it is my fault, although you're I know you're kind of trying to change the words as you go along, but I am feeling off you that you think a lot was my fault. And no, I'm I feeling a little bit. No, I, I don't, like, don't put words in my mouth because I wouldn't say fault. I wouldn't say it was your fault. No, I didn't put words. I said you're feeling that. I, yeah. I'm not actually putting the words. I'm just telling you how I'm, what I'm feeling right now. Yeah. What's well, so am I? There's so much more to me. But you didn't show me that much more. No, we didn't have a relationship. So that's, that's what I mean. Yeah. Now, Lindsay and Idel's relationship is under pressure for a second time. Serious doubts about the reunion have started to creep in. I feel like we've kind of only hit the tip of the iceberg. It could go either way. Do I want to do this? Do I actually want to get back into Bewitched? Getting to rehearse and getting on the stage, I'm not sure we'll get there. I'm doubtful. We always look like we're on speed half the time. <laughs> it sounds oh, like you used to do this. I did, yeah. Yeah, sure, I'll do it. Yeah, that's what yeah, yeah. What was it you did? You can do it. Oh, yes. I think you should show look us. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was actually mad, wasn't I? It was mad sitting when everyone I'm watching the videos is actually quite nice just to remind yourself what everybody else did. With Evie, the bewitched girls are sharing out their vocal duties. We're ready for you. After seeing their first four singles all go straight to number one, it was all downhill for Bewitched until their demise in 2002. And the power struggle between Idel and the other three girls hasn't gone away. In order to rehearse, we need to know who's singing what, and I, at the moment, have not got a clue. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is it a kind of like you do 50% and you split 50% or is it kind of four yeah. way? It's probably it's kind, kind of, of ends up like that. Yeah. I felt a little bit of pressure coming in because I've made a deal about it <laughs> and I've been saying I want to do some lead and, um, and obviously coming in today uh, I, I felt in some ways like I had something to prove to the girls. Even though in theory I said, okay, fine, that's the compromise, and now I'm giving it away, I'm like, I want it all back, I love singing. So I want you to take it off her, because yeah. right now I almost would be saying... Leave it the way it was. Not because it was bad, No, I think but just because you weren't convincing I think it's because it was the first time it was sang, and technically yeah. they are asking the question while they're singing, they're going, can I have that? Yeah. But now, yeah. yes, you can have you it. You can. Yeah. But you haven't talked... I had to have a little word with myself inside my head. And um, when we sang for the first time, and her response was, you're not a lead singer, I was like... Catapult. 
all the way back to 1998. I found I it hard not to get emotional with what you said. I was like, don't get emotional, get strong by it. Yeah. But initially I wanted to go shriek, because yeah, that's what I, I did I in the agree. band. I do still think that they all think of Adele as the lead singer, but yet they all want to come up to that. But if they want to come up to her level and be lead singers with her, then they need a little bit of her attitude because the other three just don't as yet have it. Love have a hug, because she did really well with that. I know I was being tough. Mm. I know I was. Thank you. But I, think, I honestly think you can do it. We are. Next up, a confident bewitched. I felt a bit nervous performing in front of all the other bands. Yeah. Yeah. I mucked up my Irish dance in that. So did I. That really annoying. Yeah, me too. I was man, everybody was that. Woohoo! I was like, <laughs> now the pressure's on. <laughs> yeah. oh. And need to be 100% ready for the big gig. The pressure's now fully on, and Bewitched are dusting off their vocal cobwebs with Evie. Say you do it. Say you do what I do. Say you do it. If you want to pop in a few new fresh ad-libs, that's always good. You've got yeah. great ranges, you know what I mean? And the fact that, okay, you were mucking about, you suddenly did a Mariah Carey yeah, in there. But, you. <laughs> but you know, why not? Why not show off the fact that Bewitched are great singers? You know, I don't know how the confidence is generally. Mm -hmm. It seems better. Oh Do gosh. you all feel more like, because yeah. you, you were yeah. saying that you suddenly felt like you're becoming more like of in a... In the last two days, I feel more me than I have felt in years. Um, I've forgotten how I feel singing, and it's been really nice to get back and in the studio. And yeah, no, I feel great. I have to say, I've been feeling. Ignite your flame. Yeah, no, I have. I'm delighted. I'm Are you amazing. ignited as well, you three? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I feel a lot more confident with the, you know, just with the, the vocals and even the it's BVs really and the few well. sort of okay. lead lines that I've got. Mm. I don't want to start you off. I think Sinead is feeling a bit weird. I know. I don't yeah. want to start you off. I know. I know. It's it's a lot to take in. Yeah. Suddenly being here doing this. It's been over a week since Sinead's seen her family and it's all getting a bit overwhelming. I mean, it's funny because I think out of all of us, I mean, Sinead has actually taken her foot off the pulse in this industry yeah. for the 10 years. Us, we were all doing something a little bit and I think you're a bit overwhelmed by it all, aren't you? Mm. But you're doing brilliantly. Yeah, nice so thing. Well. Yeah. I just feel, like you say, you feel you in this. Yes. I don't feel me in yeah. this. Yeah, I am in a different space today um, and I've kind of surprised myself because uh, I was very excited about coming and I am still excited but I don't think I really, really li realised, I suppose, I don't really think I thought about being together, you know, and doing this, so it's kind of making me feel unsettled. Oh dear. <sighs> it's, good, it's good getting it all out. I think out of any of us, being back here and becoming the band again, where it's making me stronger and I'm feeling better about it being back singing, it's actually making her feel a little intimidated, I think, because she was, happy in her position at home. We're stepping into a life that was, and it's just natural that some of the old feelings are gonna be coming back up. It seems like her mind wants to be at home and that's where she's most comfortable. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is the bit that I love, the whole rehearsal and, mm -hmm. you know, this is the, my favorite bit of it. It's just, uh, I think I'm like, just a bit overwhelmed yeah. with it all. On the whole, I know that I want to do this. It's just, um, it's whether I'm capable of actually following through with it. That's what I'm questioning. I mean, it is emotional, all this. You know, it's a big deal. I feel guilty. It's being away from my kids. Oh. Yeah. I just don't know. It's nice to see us actually dressed as adults. I half expected the rail to be full of young clothes and denim or something, so when I seen the dress, I was like, oh, yay, oh my God, it's like they're fitting to her age. But growing older and wiser means it's not just the denim they can leave behind. It's taking a lot less time to start feeling like a band than I thought it would. Yeah. I'm so comfortable yeah. with you. Like, I have had, even like, rehearsals and yeah. all through, I haven't had one 
feeling of, oh God, this isn't going to work. This no. Is really okay. I was trying to even remember what half the conversations were we had, no. and I couldn't even remember. It's gone. It's so actually I was, gone. It is. And I was thinking, oh, I think they really belong, belonged back in 99. After missing the last block of rehearsals because of college studies, Kiwi is catching up with her sister Idel. The bewitched twins are making sure they don't repeat the mistakes that led to their split the first time around. It was weird. There was a really bizarre feeling in the room before lunch yesterday. And and is that I, because Blue were coming? I, I would sh I should imagine so. I think everybody like quietly was feeling the pressure. That must have been horrible for you guys and you're like, well brilliant. Yeah, we were a man down. Yeah. So you're feeling a bit weird that I wasn't there to kind of back you up almost. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, where's my wing woman? Like, you know. And I think it's gonna take time for them, for me to feel like they're my wing women. I kind of fear a little bit that you're missing this a little bit. Yeah, I am. It's because I'm so busy. It's been a massive journey for me going through college and I can't muck that up for two weeks rehearsals. I just can't, you know. Because when I look at you, there are definitely moments that you have tough times and emotional times, but please don't ever forget that I'm here for you. I never and forget. Jeez, you're the only reason I'm still sat on this table today. Yeah. You feel like it's quite important not to be that vulnerable right now, and I, and I appreciate that. Yeah. But I just wanted you to know that I am here for you as well, and I know there are things going on when you're ready. Just don't forget to come back. Yeah. I don't have to be a counsellor, but I'm your sister. I know. <laughs> this morning. Uh, it's like half in makeup, half back out, yeah. half in your hair, get on stage. So, uh, yeah, the look is, um, it's not quite finished yet. Quite like <laughs> it. It's going to have three rollers. Right, so <laughs> Bewitched! didn't break my heart for years. You say you feel you in this. Yes. I don't feel me in yeah. this. We're stepping into a life that was. I feel guilty. Oh, no, Staying away from my kids. Oh. 